Hi everybody and welcome back to Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. We are starting right where we left off and we are heading to town. So we're gonna go this way. We're still in the introductory phase. Going here along the least highway. I'm sorry about the last video's very poor quality, but I'm I'm still trying to figure out what quality I can play with it without it affecting the entire well affecting my gameplay and still being capable of you being capable of reading in the video on YouTube. <coughs> Alright, here we are. It looks like we made good time. Not too early or too late either. We just barely graduated from Sunday school. I never dreamed we'd have to study so hard to become bracers. Well, you're in luck. Today is our last day of training. Truth be told, though, you're the one who signed up to be a bracer in the first place. So I don't know why you'd expect to get away with any less effort. Oh, yeah. I guess I did. Alright then. Let's get to it and make it through this last hazing from Shira. You look ready to me. Let's go meet with Shira at the Bracer, Bracer Guild. Over there, then. Alright, we're just gonna go straight and do all the intro stuff for this episode. Aina. There you two are. Good morning, Estelle. Good morning, Joshua. Morning, Aina. Good morning. <coughs> Is Shara here already? Yes, she's waiting for you upstairs. Once you finish today's training, you'll finally be recognized as members of the Brace Guild. Good luck to the both. Thanks. We'll do our best. Alright, let's go up and talk to our teacher. Or trainer, or whatever. Shara's art. The star and the hanged man. The hermit and the magician. And last of all, inversion through the wheel of fortune. Hmm, this is a difficult combination. How should I interpret this? Good morning, Shara. Well, if it isn't, there's still in Joshua. This is a rare occasion for the both of you to show up so early. Since it's my last day of training, I figured, why not? I'm ready to get this show on the road and become a bracer myself. I give you credit for your enthusiasm, but I'm going to work you hard today in every way I can think of to make sure that high-spirited attitude of yours holds up. I hope you're ready. I can feel that enthusiasm dropping already. Quiet, you. Every time I teach you something, you somehow manage to forget it. This training is my way of trying to keep some of that information in your head instead of letting it dribble out your ears like it usually does. Why, <laughs> Joshua, Shara's begging on me. Don't worry, Shara. While Estelle may hate studying and rarely ever does her homework, X Rashley is overly naive and has a tendency to stick her nose into everything. Her instincts are sharp. So I'm sure she'll pick up on how to use an augment with some practice, eventually, probably. I guess there's not much I can do now except hope for the best. Hold on a sec, Josh. Somehow, I get the feeling that you weren't standing up for me. Well, that's odd. I'm positive I described all your best traits accurately. Whatever. By the way, Shara, what were you trying to predict with your tarot cards? Your face was really intent. Oh, this? I was just trying to get a vague reading about what might happen in the near future. Unfortunately, I don't seem to have been in the right mindset to interpret the cards correctly. <coughs> uh, uh, having this bad cough today. You couldn't read the cards? Now oh, that's surprising to hear. Actually, the more profound the meaning of the cards, the more difficult they become to interpret. But that's not important now. I think it's time we start your final training. I give you a brief rundown of all the information we've covered in, the pr in your previous 
training. This is the minimal level of knowledge that racers should have in order to function effectively. And to still make sure you pay especially close attention to what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. Alright. What would you like to know? Let's go through all of them. Just so all of you guys also can get a slight hint of what's going on. What this, these augments are. We're gonna start with this. Augments are mechanical devices which operate by using what is known as orbital energy. A variety of effects can be produced depending on their structure and the type of quarks or processed septium installed. Although it's only been about 50 years since their invention, these devices play an integral role in all facets of life from lights, heaters and other everyday products to weapons, magic and even airships. In connection, this technological reform is commonly known as the Orbital Revolution. Alright, did you guys get that? So these augments, they are used for... Instead of like engines and... They can also be used for combat and stuff like that. Like a gun. In this game, there exists something like an orbital gun that runs on the, this orb, orbital energy. That's what these augments are. Alright, let's go on. About braces. <coughs> braces are investigative and combat specialists who work to protect civilians and maintain the stability of their respective regions. They aid the community in various ways such as exterminating monsters, preventing crime, finding lost items, and escorting people and goods. The Bracer Guild, which has established branches across the continent, manages the affairs of the Bracers in each region. Alright, so that's what these people are. Uh, the Sherazad, she is already a full-fledged Bracer, so you would say. And so is, so is Cassius, Joshua and Estelle's father. They go around and enforce law and uh, stuff like that in the cities. While the army, uh, they enforce the law around gates and checkpoints and passes and stuff like that. Yeah, so they're, they're kind of like uh, police here in the city. Alright. Oh, we can ask about the basic guild now too. I didn't do that the other time. I was playing through this. Alright. Bracer Guild is a worldwide organization of bracers established fi 50 years ago. Aside from the Five World Kingdom, there are numerous other branches set up across the continent which promote peace and stability within their areas. Due to its international and neutral nature, it often mediates between disputing powers and it even played a role in ending the Hundred Days War. However, as a consequence of the various roles, the Bracer Guild is required to fulfill, it is often short-handed. Alright. That's uh, just the organization that these braces originate from. Yeah. Okay. The Liberal Kingdom. That's the country that uh, they all live in. Not the whole world. I don't really know what the world is called. I don't remember. But the country is named Liberal. Alright. By the Liberal Kingdom. The Kingdom of Liberal in which we live sits on the western half of the Simurian continent. Okay. The continent is called Simur Simura? I think continent and abounds with nature and deep-rooted traditions. 
Bible is proud to be one of the leading producers of Septian on the continent and is known for its high level of technology used to develop augments. Augment technology has also been a key pillar of support for Libel in protecting its independence as it has content contented, contented with neighboring nations. Ten years ago, when Libel was invaded by the Erebonian Empire, uh, that's the one that's north, it was the it was the use of orbital powered airships that saved the kingdom from defeat. Consequently, even now, our relationship with the Empire is somewhat sensitive, but thanks to the Queen's political finesse, Lightbulb enjoys peace. Yeah. Alright. So something about the war and what this whole kingdom is about. Well, namely only actually one region of the five regions that holds in the library the orbital energy, orbital technology thing. I only really think that it comes from one region, or maybe it's just one region that's way above all the other regions. Yeah, but, but you'll see that that's gonna be quite late in the game, but you'll see. Alright, that's all. Let's see. Since we've got a mountain of stuff to do today, I'll let you off the hook this time with a condensed review. We're going to speed things up now and move on to the practical portion of your training. Uh, Shara? How is today's practical training any different from the tra training we've done before? Since it's practical, that means you will be experiencing things firsthand. Therefore, I'm going to have the both of you run through everything as if this were a real brace job. So what you're saying is, there won't be any studying at a desk involved? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. This time you'll have to go out and make a physical effort to accomplish your task. And make sure to have your work up a sweat, so I hope you're ready. Yes! That's seriously just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> I like their word place in this game. I didn't know what I was going to do if I had to sit another day with my tush parked at a desk. I guess I got all worried for nothing. Well, suddenly you're all bright, bright and cheerful, Estelle. Let's just hope that smile on your face lasts until the end of today's training. Okay, let's get cracking on your first objective, shall we? Let's have at it! Your first objective will be to confirm the details of the job you will be performing. But before that, there's something that we need to give the boat. Aina, are they ready? Yes, they are. Alright, you two. Go get one for each of yourselves. Alright, so yeah, I think we're going to register ourselves in this bracer guild branch here in the Roland region. These are very important to so make sure not to lose them. Oh, 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 oh. It's the notebook and badges for being bra bra bracers. Bracer notebooks serve as the official way to record the status of your current jobs. Also, anything you may hear or anything that you may find and wear. These kinds of trivial, thi trivial things can often become clues. No matter how insignificant something may seem, always write it down. Understood. Crap, sounds like it's going to be a pain. Yeah. But she's gonna do it anyway. Oh? Please tell me it was my ears playing tricks on me because I swear I only got one response. Uh, I'm sure they were too. Keeping an accurate account of events is an important duty for all braces. So get with the program and stop trying to make this out to be more than it really is, Estelle. Okay, okay, I got it. Make sure you do. Alright then, let's begin. Look over by the door. You can see that there's a bulletin board standing there. These two things. First, I want you to go and check the job description. 
posted there. When the bulletin board is approached, a exclamation mark will appear. appear. Pressing the OK button will display the job list. By selecting job names on the list, you can view their details. Right, so we're gonna go over here, and then the exclamation mark appears, the interaction mark, or whatever. Right, gonna click. Training, retrieval, new quest. And we're gonna accept it. Training retrieval. Client Sherazad, our teacher. Pay 500 Mira. Details direct request. Alright. This training will involve searching the sewers beneath Roland and bringing back the contents of a chest. See Sherazad for details. Alright, we accept it. Details of the job confirmed on the bulletin board and other important events will be automatically recorded in the Bracer Notebook. The Bracer Notebook can be easily found by clicking on the Books tab of the Items menu. It can also be accessed by configuring a Bracer Book shortcut button on the Configuration menu. Alright, very good! It looks like you were able to see what was posted without any trouble. Checking the bulletin board is one of the most basic functions as Brazer performs in the job. Checking regularly to see whether or not there are any urgent tasks which need immediate attention is also an important duty for Brazers. Man, all this talk about duty is starting to cramp my style. <laughs> sure, there are a lot of rules to follow, but there's an equal level of responsibility in the jobs themselves. I think being a brazer calls for much more than just someone with a half-hearted attitude. Uh, I guess you're right. I just have to be more motivated. Mm -hmm. Had a change of heart, have you? You bet. Well, before all that motivation sneaks off somewhere, let's get to work on your next task. What will we be doing next time? We'll be heading across the street to Mr. Melter's Orbel Factory and learning about how to use its services. So now we're going into more detail about these augments. Or quads. He has graciously taken time out of his work schedule to explain things, so make sure to be on your best behavior. Okay. Alright, here we are. Not in crossing ourselves. We're just being handheld. Uh, okay, here is where you will learn how to use an Orbital Factory services. With an Orbital Factory, you can modify your augments and synthesize support quads in order to use Orbital Arts. Arts have a wide range of effects and if mastered can be extremely helpful. The brace business is a pretty risky occupation, so the guild has had a long-standing relationship with these Orbital Factories. Anyway, this is about as much as I can explain. I'll leave the technical details to the expert. So, Mr. Melders, if you wouldn't mind taking over from here. No problem, leave everything to me. So what is it that you would like to know about? Alright, let's just start from the beginning. <coughs> Augments. Augments are mechanical devices which exhibit an array of effects through the installation of various types of quads. By definition, that means that lights, airship, engines, and so on are also types of augments. However, the ones we will be discussing today are battle augments, which enhance the user's physical abilities and make it possible to use magic. Since each augment is adjusted to match the owner's personal aptitude, the structures for these devices also differ for each owner. Simply put, the shape of the fixed elemental slots and lines which connect them vary at any rate. <laughs> vary. At any rate, that's the layman's explanation. In order to install quartz, you must fern have first have an open slot. By default, the central slot is open, but the other slots must be opened at an orbital factory, like this. Like this one. 
it'll take a fair amount of sepith too. EP, which is needed for magic, will also see a max increase according to the number of open slots. I recommend opening them all as soon as possible. So what is it you that you would like to know about? Okay, that's that then. Alright. Uh, he mentioned uh, Sepith in that one, so now ah, we're gonna take it from top to bottom again. Alright, to Obel Arts. Simply put, Obel Arts are magic which can be discharged exclusively through the use of battle ornaments. In other words, a number of peculiar effects can be produced by using the orbital energy stored within these mechanical devices. Since orbital arts can be a mouthful, they are almost universally referred to as arts. Probably ought to have been called that from the get-go. There are several types of arts, but in order to be able to use them, the corresponding quartz must be first be synthesized at an orbital factory. Augments are also set up so that once a particular quartz is installed into a slot, the owner will be able to use those arts. The type of arts the one can use also changes depending on the elemental value and the combination of installed quartz. Basically, if you want to use water arts, all you have to do is install quartz with a water elemental value. In reality, augments are much more complex than what I have described, but I think this information should suffice for now. So what is it that you would like to do? Alright. So, these orbital arts, they're like magic. They are basically magic. But like, there are offensive arts, and there are defensive arts, and there are supportish arts. Uh, like, I'm probably gonna choose so that Estelle, the girl, is going to be like uh, this tanky kind of. Both can have a lot of HP and uh, can taunt. Oh, no, 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 she can't taunt right now, but uh, she'll get to that in time. Well, uh, I, I think she's the one who gets the taunt th first, but I, I know that Joshua gets the taunt. Uh, later in the game as well So maybe we'll change that later in the game But um, that's going to be my tanky healer and uh, Joshua is going to be my kind of offensive guy that can shoot fireballs and Yeah, offensive magic. Yes All right, let's move on quartz Quartz are circuits made from seven Quartz have a vast number of effects and raise the owner's abilities while simultaneously making it possible for them to use arts. However, you will not be able to harness any of these effects until Quartz has been installed into a slot. However, there are also fixed slots in which only a certain type of elemental Quartz can be installed. Yeah, we'll see to that in a minute. This being the case, when you synthesize a new quartz, be sure to check your augment and decide where you will be installing it ahead of time. So what is it that you would like? Okay, oh, that's the quartz explanation. So basically, you can have almost any quartz in any of these slots. But there are some exceptions, like Joshua. He has two, two of his slots are only uh, time elemental value. We'll get to that. I'll go through the menus in a bit too. All right, Sepith. Sepith are fragments of septium which are dropped by monsters. They are divided into seven types: earth, brown, water, blue, fire, red, wind, green, time, black, space, gold, and mirage, silver. Sepith can be exchanged for mirror almost anywhere, but at the Opal Factory it can be used to synthesize quartz and to open open slots in which to install the synthesized quartz. So what is it you would like to know? Okay, that's all of it. Um, 
when we get to the sewer part, I think is the first time that we'll be able to move freely. So we can check all the menus after we've gotten the introductory, uh, the introduction from the game itself. So then uh, maybe after that I can explain further. All right, let's go on. Looks like Mr. Melders has answered all your questions. If there's nothing else, then let's have you both try and use the services here. Maybe it's now. For that, you're going to need some sepith. Received several of each type of elemental sepith. With that amount, you two should be able to synthesize a few quotes. Now, I want you to begin my first by first making an elemental quartz that will work with each of your particular augments. In your case still, any elemental quartz is okay, but for you Joshua, it has to be time elemental quartz. Normally, at a shop you would be able to exchange Sepith for mirror, but for this training you'll not be able to use the service. Upon approaching the counter, a talk mark will appear. Pressing the OK button, will display a list of options, select modify or trade to use the orbital factory services. Is that from this guy? Oh, good work, good work. If you need to use the orbital factory, give Freddy a holler over there. Okay, okay. We're gonna go over here to Freddy. Um, modify trade. Alright. So we got 20 of every Sepith. Let's look at the slots. Here we have still there's these slots all over the place so you will notice that this one in the middle the main slot that's already open and that it will be like that for every character some characters will also have two maybe three maybe all of the slots open at the start when you get them But uh, here for Estelle and Joshua, only the first slot will be open. And uh, it also says, next to the already open and openable and not openable, what kind of quartz will be... What, what kind of quartz will be capable of installment in these slots. But um, Estelle here, she has all of her slots can manage all types quartz. So we can we can basically have one of each. Like water, fire, wind, earth, time and so so on. Alright. Let's move on to Joshua here. Here Joshua is a little different because free I think free. Yeah. I don't know. No, four four of his slots have these white borders around them which means that the all quartz are all right to be used in these slots but these two his main slot and this one up here has these black borders which means that only the black kind of sep kind of sepith the time one can be used in this kind of slot so let's try and install some quartz I'll go and buy some here. As for Joshua, we will have to buy this one because it's the only one that can be inserted into his slot. So we're gonna buy action one for Joshua. And then, as I said, I was going to make still this tanky kind of character. So we're going to increase her health by buying this water quartz. So now you can see over at the Sepith cost bar that we've bought a water quartz for 20 Sepith, 20 water Sepith, and a time quartz for 20 time Sepith. Alright, let's insert them. Uh, we can't do that right now. I'll have to use the menu to do that. Uh, I'm just gonna do this quick because I don't want to explain it yet. Here we're gonna insert that there. This will be kind of confusing for some people, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Alright, hi there. Looks like you two are doing well in your training. If you'd like to 
modify your opens, please select command for trade service. Alright. Oh, so you finished installing your quad tab. Since you have both recovery and attack art set up, it appears that you don't need any more instruction from me about how to do this task. If you balance your arts out between each other like you've done here, it should make dealing with monsters much easier. Additionally, your brazen notebooks contain information about which quads allow you to use which arts. Oh my god. I'm burping like hell. If you'd like to use more powerful arts, check out the arts and quartz charts in your brazen notebooks and find something that works for you. Alright, our training here is almost finished. Last of all, I'm going to have one of you open a new slot in your augments. The more slots you have available to you, the broader range of choices you'll have. Since EP which is consumed by using arts can have its max value increased by opening up slots, it would be a good idea to open them all early on. Now I want you to use the Sepith and open a slot on each of your augments. Go ahead and decide which slots you're going to open. Alright, so we're going to open some slots now. Going back into this, and then we're going to, let's see, we have... We have 30 of each of the elemental value slots. So we're going to open a slot for Joshua, I think. Yeah, we're going to open this outer slot over here. Open slot 6 for Joshua. Alright, and then we're also... I can't buy any more quads. That's pretty bullshit. I wanted to buy another one. Well, alright. I guess we're done here. Good work on opening up a slot, Joshua. Since your central slot is limited to a certain elemental, it would be best to increase your open's number of open slots early on. Right. This concludes your training here at the Orbel Factory. Now it's time to move on to what you've both been waiting for, the qualification test. Pardon? Did, did you just say... Test? You can't honestly tell me that you forgot about the test again, can you? Didn't I remind you just this morning? Yeah, you did. Now that you mention it, I vaguely remember some sort of talk along those lines at the breakfast table. Sometimes I fear for the future of the Brazier Guild and humanity. <laughs> for the Brazier Guild and humanity. Oh well, no sense in worrying about that now. Let's head over to the testing area. You mean like, now? I don't know if I'm ready for it. How about a little less yapping and a little more walking? <laughs> Get over here, young lady. Joshua, help me! Mr. Meldus, Freddy, thank you for all your help. Don't mention it. Good luck with that test of yours. We'll be waiting for you. I'm going to remember that you left me high and dry like this, Joshua. Alright. All your training has finally come down to this. Your qualification test will begin here. I expect to see you both use what you've learned up to this point. Understood. What's wrong, Estelle? Um, Shara? What now? I was kind of wondering, but is there not going to be a paper test or something? Can I just drop you on your head as a child or something? You just read what it said on the bulletin board not that long ago, right? Yeah, and... And I even made you jot down what you read in your brazen notebooks. Unless you forgot that too. I'm pretty sure the job listing mentioned searching for and retrieving an item from the sewers. Ringing any bells yet? What a relief. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sparkle! Oh, divine ideas! I give thanks to thee for thy infinite grace in bestowing upon us such wonderful gifts as sewers. So what you're really saying is that you thought it was a paper chest. No wonder you were acting all crazy back at the Orbital Factory. 
Uh, I can already feel this nostalgia. All those horrible days stuck in a classroom are starting to feel like grand memories indeed. <laughs> I'm really starting to wonder if we'll even be able to graduate at all. What's wrong with you? Why do you have to go and say something like that when I'm trying to reminisce, reminisce about positive things? She doesn't really seem to be all positive about them though. Alright, that's enough jabbering you two. This is supposed to be a test, so how about the both of you try to at least look a little anxious? Just so you know though, if you do happen to flunk the test, you don't even want to imagine the kind of homework I have in store for the both of you. <laughs> we'll be fine. Just tell us what you want us to do and let us loose. Well, if you're so confident, then how about proving that you're not just blowing hot air with the results of your test? Hmm? Anyway, as you both saw on the bulletin board, this test will be a search conducted in Roland's sewers. Your objective is to retrieve the contents of a chest which has been placed somewhere within that area. The layout of the sewers is extremely simple, so you don't need to worry about getting lost either. However, there are real living, breathing monsters down there. So if you get careless and let your let down your guard, you will be sorry. Also, let me give you this before I forget. Receive tear bomb times three. That's kind of like an item that will heal you. Receive Monster Guide. What's this book for? It's called the Monster Guide, and it's used to record information about monsters and other opponents you meet. Whenever you figure out an enemy's attributes, you should make an immediate note of it in there. Sounds pretty straightforward to me. He who controls the flow of information controls the tide of battle, right? That's exa exactly what I'm saying. You've really got a good head on your shoulders, Jay. That's some pretty useful advice. Thanks for the tip, Shara. We'll put it to good use. Alrighty then, let's get pumped and knock out this test. Let's... Don't forget, though, this is an exam. We should make sure we treat it as such. Alright, so here we are in the sewers. We're going to go through combat tutorial down here. Alright. There appears to be a recovery point set up over there. Let's use it if our HP and EP become low before engaging in any further battles. Augment charging stations are recovery points set up in dangerous areas. As the recovery point is approached, an ex uh, exclamation mark will appear and two choices will be displayed by pressing the OK button by selecting the rest. Option, all HP and EP will be restored. Sounds like a plan to me. So it's like this, you can also like rest at inns and such, where they ask if you want to stay the night, but it doesn't actually progress a day in the game or something like that. Just, it, it, it weirded me out. <laughs> but hey. It's fair now. There is an open charging station here. I would like to use the rest. Alright, I think I'm gonna... Before I engage in any combat, I'm gonna leave this episode here. So... Yeah, before we go into combat, we're gonna leave it here. I'm gonna go over, save. I think we're gonna leave that one so we have more saves. We have the Roland Sewers, the Level 3, I found this love, a new beginning, Prologue, Roland Sewers. Alright. So, that's it for this episode. I'm sorry if you were expecting a lot of. a lot more, but the reading takes a lot of time and we still have to get kind of into the game. Or actually before doing actual stuff so thank you all so much for watching and see you in the next episode bye